So tell me what you guys think. Do you think within the next few years we will see an increase in popularity with the new generation Tacoma here? Or are we going to continue the trend of people really thinking that this is a pile of dog crap, right? Because there's not a lot to love about it, but they're selling a ton of them because they're producing a ton of them. And well, that post-purchase rationalization is a powerful thing. What do you think? Behold, the most expensive Toyota Tacoma on this lot. Just under $60,000 for this TRD off-road. It appears you can fly a B-52 bomber through that side. Hey YouTube, Untamed here. I think we spent way too much time focusing on the negative with the brand new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. I think it's time that we pivot a little bit and we highlight the goodness in these new platforms here because there's so much to love and I think these are going to sell extremely well. Let's get into it. You see, us real Toyota enthusiasts, we care about horsepower and torque. That's all we care about. We like reading that brochure knowing that we get tons of power. Forget reliability and simplicity. That is so 1991. We're not doing that anymore, guys. Look at this, 326 horsepower and 465 foot-pounds of torque. That's all that matters, ladies and gentlemen. Forget all the you know, faulty transmissions, the, the panel gaps, the, the loose components. Forget all of that. Forget the fact that it doesn't have any bump stops. That doesn't matter because we're all about horsepower and torque and towing capacity here. Am I right? Man, there's like a never-ending line of these things. One, two, three, four. You know, I would argue that Toyota was pretty smart in the sense that they left a few miscellaneous problems in the new 2024 Toyota Tacoma that we as human beings, as the average Joes and Janes, can actually fix. I'm talking the, the loose glo uh, glove compartments, the loose shaky front grills. We can actually fix that kind of stuff, right? So I think Toyota's kind of smart because they knew for a fact that we wouldn't be able to get our hands on that overly complex turbocharged hybrid platform that we find with the iForce Max in particular. They know we can't fix that, but at least we can fix a loose and shaky front grille. I'm sure with a little bit of finagling we can fix panel gaps, right? So right here we have a pretty tight gap out back on the tailgate, then over here it appears you can fly a B-52 bomber through that side. But again, I think Toyota was smart, they left that for us to figure out, challenge accepted. But let's be real, I think Toyota just realized that when they put this 5.7 liter V8 in their vehicles and the 4 liter naturally aspirated V6, they found out that there wasn't a whole lot of returning customers for repair or anything that required any additional maintenance that would generate income for Toyota. So, well, they're smart. Let's put a complex engine that we can't work on within their new trucks and well, now we have no choice but to run back to the dealership and get it fixed. Kind of smart from a monetary perspective, right? You know, it is old news now, but I am still quite shocked that Toyota did not implement the external or the frame-mounted bump stops on the new Tacomas here. Rather, they went with an internal to the shock bump stop system, and it just does not work for a truck. So I'm shocked that they did that. They took a sports car philosophy and applied it to the Tacoma here, which makes zero sense. Why fix what's not broken? I don't get it. So obviously much of this video is tongue in cheek, me joking around, but I want to get serious for a minute. I do firmly believe that the new fourth generation Toyota Tacoma will become wildly popular and wildly successful in the coming years. I'm not saying that because I want that to happen, but I'm saying that because I firmly believe it will happen. And let me explain why. So let's talk sheer production numbers. Toyota has historically produced a ton more, a ton more Tacomas for the midsize pickup truck segment comparatively to other vehicle manufacturers. For instance, in 2023 alone, Toyota sold 237,000 brand new Toyota Tacomas. The next runner-up, the second place midsize pickup truck sold, was the Chevy Colorado with 72,000 units sold. And then the Nissan Frontier with 58,000 units sold in 2023 followed by the Jeep Gladiator with 55,000 units sold. So pretty much each quarter, Toyota produces more, more units of the Tacoma here than other vehicle manufacturers sell and produce in the entire year. So it's not because of the popularity, I, I would argue. I would just say they, they mass produce the crud out of this thing. So we're gonna continuously see it all over the road. And while there's a beautiful thing called cogni cognitive bias, or post-purchase rationalization that makes us justify our purchases. So we as human beings, we are all guilty of it. We buy something and then we will defend it until we are blue in the face that it was a good purchase, right? That post-purchase rationalization is a real thing. And well, when they're producing 
a quarter million of these things each and every year, there's gonna be a ton of them on the road within the next few years. And when there's a ton of them on the road, that becomes a huge secondhand market for them and people end up buying them and then they start justifying them. And hopefully, hopefully, Toyota will actually iron out some of the kinks within the next few years. So it is safe to assume that this will continuously be the top selling, best selling midsize pickup truck. Well, it better be with those, those production numbers, right? So it's gonna continuously be that as it has been for the last couple of decades. But most importantly, people are just gonna buy them and then we will justify our purchases because that's what we do as humans. I know it's no surprise to most people now, especially with the main crankshaft bearing issues in the Tundra here, but you can easily find a new generation Tundra for sale with eight to $12,000 off of MSRP. That's pretty common now. And if you don't get that kind of a discount, I would walk away in a heartbeat and go to the next dealership and you'll find one with a huge discount on it eventually, pretty easily, I would argue. I think we're gonna start seeing a similar case for the for the Tacomas here. You can already find them for four to six thousand dollars off of MSRP and with incentivized interest rates. That's pretty soon for that to be happening, right? So these only started hitting the lots what about seven months ago, and we're already seeing pretty substantial over 10% discounts on them with incentivized interest rates. So that is a that's definitely a red flag to Toyota and hopefully they're listening to that and hopefully they're making those adjustments. It sounds like they are with the automatic transmission, the eight speed automatic transmission that comes with it. As many of you guys know, it has been found to be faulty in many cases and Tacoma or Toyota is owning up to it and fixing those units as they come up. 18, 19, 20. This is actually my first time seeing a new Tacoma Limited in person been seeing a ton of SR5s, TRD off-roads, and TRD sports. First time seeing limited, so you got that different front grill. Anyway, let's see. But yeah, here we go. Just under $55,000 for the limited here. You know, I beat the dead horse 10 times now, but since when really is that what we are spending on a mid-sized pickup truck? It blows my mind, especially when you can go get a, a Nissan Frontier Pro 4X top trim for 40 grand, 41,000. It just blows my mind that that has become the norm. It is quite baffling to see the, the resale value of the previous generation Tacoma skyrocket right now, alongside, of course, the previous generation Toyota Tundra, and I think it's going to be the case for the fifth generation Toyota 4Runner. Values of those, because they're the old, archaic, simplistic, and reliable platforms, are going to remain extremely high. Would you agree that within the next two or three years though, just based on that sheer production volume from Toyota, that the fourth generation Tacoma here will become increasingly popular over the next couple of years, especially as these begin to hit the secondhand market, become a little bit more affordable, get away from those huge price tags that they're starting at. Do you think people are gonna start liking this? Or do you believe that Toyota will need to make a drastic change to this platform in order for it to gain popularity? 86, 87, 88. Isn't that just a beautiful sight? Soak it in, ladies and gentlemen, soak it in. This is already an old relic. All right, fellas, behold, the most expensive Toyota Tacoma on this lot. We got a 2024 Tacoma TRD Off-Road with that little badge on it. Any guesses? There we are. Just under $60,000 for this TRD Off-Road. What in the heck? The TRD Pro last year with the V6 in it, 51 to $53,000. But here we are, 60 grand for the TRD off-road. 134, 135. And just for reference, back in 2021, this Tundra TRD Pro was $54,000. And well, 60 grand buys you a four-cylinder turbocharged Tacoma these days. How about that? If I'm being honest with you guys, a part of me does wish that I was the type of Toyota fanboy that would hype up anything that Toyota put out, right? All of these newer, smaller displacement, turbocharged four cylinders. I wish I was excited about that. But instead, yeah, I'm, I'm calling a spade a spade. Toyota is chasing green credits. They're chasing carbon credits and government handouts for producing these smaller displacement motors and more fuel efficient options with the hybridization of things, right? That's what they're doing. So part of me does feel like maybe it would be better for my YouTube channel if I highlighted and and, and, and hype them up for everything they put out, but I just wouldn't be being honest with myself and I don't think I'd be honest with you guys. So 
this is what you get. You know, this is my honest critique of Toyota. I am hopeful that they make some positive adjustments with Toyota fans and Toyota enthusiasts in mind, rather than just chasing the mighty dollar and trying to, to bolster their, their stock, right? Because that's ultimately what they're doing. They are a company at, at the end of the day. You can't fault them for that, for wanting them to bump their bottom line. But producing trucks like this new Tacoma and that new Tundra, they're pretty lackluster and nobody really wanted that. So. I'll wrap up the video there, guys. If you appreciate this type of content, as always, I do sincerely appreciate it. If you consider liking and subscribing, your support does mean a lot and it doesn't go unnoticed. Until next time. 3,144, 3,145, 3,146, 3,147, 3,400.